Thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to welcome you all to the Power of Prophecy on this evening, and you're in for a treat, especially those that are sitting in the audience on today, as well as those that are streaming live with us on this evening. I want you to know that the word of the Lord is sure, and the prophets are alive. Those of you that are in the um, prophetic chat room, I'm looking and I'm seeing many of you already getting prophetic words already. We want you to sit back, relax, and know that the Lord is moving. But before we get started, I want those that are in the audience today, just um, find two people and greet them and let them know that they're in the right place on this evening. Amen. Stand upon your feet and just greet everybody. Let them know you that they made a right choice. Amen. You're in the right place. Amen. 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 How many of you love the Lord? I love the Lord. I said, how many of you truly love the Lord? Amen. 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 You are here by choice this evening. Amen. And I want you to know that you made a right choice this evening. And we have a wonderful woman of God, uh, awesome teacher. Um, she always tell us that you have a choice. You can either um, sit back and listen to the history of Jesus, or you could sit back and listen to the mystery. And I don't know about you, but I want to listen to the mysteries of Jesus. Amen. Anybody can come along and give me history. That's okay, but the history is not going to give me life. The history is not going to give me the things that I have need of or to move me into the levels that I need to move into. So I don't know about you, but I want to receive the mystery mysteries of God and this woman God has empowered her and given her an eye an ear and a mouth to speak forth the mysteries of God so without any further further ado I want those of you that are sitting in the house this evening to stand upon your feet as we clap unto the Lord amen for this great woman of God in the person of prophetess Connie Williams amen amen we want to say we thank you and amen. you are free here in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 You can be seated and she's just going to let go and let God. We want you to know you take full liberties mm -hmm. in the Lord because you are free here. Amen. 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 Uh, I just bless you tonight. Uh, I especially bless Zoe and they're so special to me. My heart is here and I just appreciate everybody. I appreciate uh, Bishop Jordan, um, and uh, we give honor to him. He's not here tonight, but we give honor to him. We love him as a uh, not just a spiritual brother, but a biological brother. Just about, we feel that close to each other. So, and Pastor Deborah, I've known him for a long time. So I just bless you tonight that your ears are open, that your heart is alert and receptive, your mind is quickened, and that you would hear, "Thus says the Lord tonight." Amen. I like to minister a lot on wealth on money, All on right. different things like that, because I believe when the, with the tsunami, those of you that seen the program uh, earlier, when I first got here last week, I believe it was, I'm losing count of yes, days, yes, was yes, it? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe that with the tsunami and with everything that happened with the tsunami, and if you weren't here for that teaching, you, I believe you can call in and get it on yes. uh, CD about uh, what, what is God doing when he messes with time? Because we went forward, the, the earth actually shifted. The tsunami was so great, the earth actually shifted and we are a millimeter of a second ahead of time right now. And my little grandbaby would say, uh, Mimi, so if I run to that counter right there, I'm gonna get there a, a millimeter of a second quicker than I would have had I run last week. And I say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So we shifted a millimeter of a second. Now that may not sound like a lot to you, but with God's timetable, a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. We figured it up roughly, basically, I'm gonna figure it up accurately, but it could account for 20 to 40 years, our time or a generation. So God spoke to me and said, we have just skipped a wilderness experience. And what I understand God is uh, sharing with me is he's saying to get his body ready to receive the wealth that has been laid up. The wealth of the wicked has been laid up, but the scripture does not say it's been loosed. Mm, so it's up there, but you have to know how to loose it in order to get to it. That's the very high wealth, the, the silver, the gold, that's the, bear, the very, any, anybody can have riches but everybody don't know how to handle wealth, 
Riches is a thing. Wealth is a state of being. Yes. So a lot of people are all right with riches, uh, riches, but when you move in the wealth realm and you have wealth abounding in your whole life, that's a whole different area. So God has told me to prepare the body of Christ to uh, live and breathe and move in that realm of wealth. So I've been studying, again, I love to study on finance and money. I love the the patterns in the Bible, the cycles, the mysteries, the secrets. I love how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I love the way he moves line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And if you just know his law and his personality and how he moves, a lot of times you don't even need the word of the Lord. You know his personality and you know what he will say. So as we study his word, God gave me a teaching on about wealth and mammon. And uh, I'm going to minister to you out of Ecclesiastics tonight because some people don't understand how, how bad God wants you to be wealthy. Some people do not realize uh, how passionate God is about you having wealth. A lot of people say, well, with the poor you will have always with you. That's what the scripture says. But if you'll study what poor means, it means poor in spirit. And they're the ones that we minister to, those that are poor in spirit or that lack the presence of God. So when we start talking about poverty, um, when God talks about poverty, he says a poor, uh, a poor man's poverty is his destruction. So to God... Destruction and poverty is the same thing. So if you're living in poverty, that's a destructive lifestyle. Now, we look at, at a lifestyle of drug addiction, alcoholism, first one thing. Now, we look as, at that as being destructive. But God says, besides that, God says poverty is a destructive lifestyle. And I would have to say amen to that myself because I've been poor and I've been homeless. It wasn't fun. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. And I will not be going back there. Amen. So poverty will destroy you. It is a destructive. Poverty is a destructive lifestyle. Just like drugs or alcohol or anything else. Because it distorts your view of life. It distorts your living. It also compromises who you are and what you came here to do. If you have a spirit of poverty, if you move in poverty, you will never finish what God has told you to do because poverty is self-destructive and it will destroy you. You will never bear fruit. So I found some scripture in Ecclesiastics that I found interesting for those of you that uh, have your scripture. For those of you that don't, I'll read it to you. Ecclesiastics 5. Ecclesiastes 5. And Ecclesiastes is such a wonderful book of wisdom. And uh, we call it the book the preacher wrote. And um, there's all kinds of wisdom in there. There's, there's a wisdom of a poor man that had answers, but he was poor. He had wisdom, but he was poor. So nobody would listen to him, even though he had all the answers. Yeah. His lifestyle was destructive. He lived in poverty. And his lifestyle uh, represented poverty. And even though he had wisdom, even though he had some answers, nobody wanted to listen to him. And see, that's just a fact of life. I always say you can, you can levitate all the way to the White House. But if you have holes in your shoes, you will not get in. That's right. But you cannot levitate to the White House and drive up in a limo with guards and, and come into the White House arena uh, with a name, with royalty, with an idea of who you are, which is an ambassador, priest, and king, and you'll get in. But you can do anything that you want to do. If you're poor, nobody is going to listen to you and nobody is going to pay attention. And that's a fact of life. I don't like it. You don't like it. It's not fair. But God spoke to me and said, I never told you I was fair. He said, I'm just. There's a difference in justice and fairness. God is just. That's why it rains on the just and the unjust. That's why the evil and the good are blessed because God is a just God. God is not fair. If God were fair, we would all have, he would have to kill us all. That's right. We would be 